right. So uh, perennialism. What is it? Well, bas- just basically, what is it to you? And but also, how does it? Um, how should I say? How how does it shape you as a magician? Uh, if you can start with just a, a very quick, maybe personal um, definition of what it is. And yeah, I'm curious to see how, you know, all this comes together because a peri- perennialist is not necessarily a magician, I guess. Not necessarily. Okay. okay. There's, there's, um, yeah, I made a whole video on the problem with my religion, right? And, um, and that's, that's really where I went into a little bit of depth in, uh, uh, around the, the word perennialism, because it's a problematic word. It actually is. Um, at the time when I was starting to discover the realms beyond the material realm, so we're talking when I was around 19, I uh, instinctively worked out that this this stuff, all of this um, mystical stuff. Let's let's uh, let's let's call it mystical stuff. Um, uh, defies boundaries. It is applicable to humanity as a whole, and I would even go as far as to say that it's applicable to all sentient consciousness. And the that's what interested me. I was interested in the universally applicable. Now, the universally applicable concepts that are explored by many religions are not the only things that those religions explore, right? So each religion, each tradition explores maybe an aspect of the universal, and it also has very specific things for the for and by the people that it is for and by um and um uh, and and those things are going to be applicable probably at a particular place uh, at a particular time and they won't be universally applicable but they important as a unifying structural um way of being and uh, and and philosophy for for going ahead in life that all of that is is very interesting to me but it's it wasn't necessarily essential for me and and as much as as i i i i did find myself being fascinated yeah by the different um the different traditions that i started to study after i realized that um at least one of the religions that I had particular ideas about, Christianity, was the first one that I studied, right? Um, and I realized that my ideas about what it was based on popular culture, based on the organizations that claim to represent Christianity, based on society in general, was very different from what I was finding written in, at least in the New Testament. I was interested in the difference between the New Testament and the Old Testament as well. And I was finding in there stuff that was clearly of its time and of that particular group of people and other stuff that was universally applicable. And that's universally applicable stuff was fascinating to me because it was still relevant to me today. And if I tried it out and when I did try it out, it it worked. It was, um, it was, it was mind blowing. And so I thought, well, if it's, if I misunderstood, mis, if I mis, mistook uh, what Christianity was so badly, then maybe I should look into Islam next. And I did. And then I found very similarly, there are some things that were very uh, useful for a group of people at a particular time. And there are other things within Islam which are universally applicable. And um, uh, and then I I started looking into the groups of people who had really focused in on those universally applicable things. The um, uh, in in Christianity um, there was a the, uh, 
I started finding out about the Gnostics and in Islam, I started mm -hmm. finding out about the Sufis. And um, then um, I, I looked into Buddhism and found many similar things and, and Taoism and so on and so forth. And then I studied to become a teacher of religious studies. And um, I studied, uh, um, uh, I studied uh, uh, Judaism and I studied um, uh, anyway, a, a number of other religions. And my interest was in the universal. And so I couldn't really call myself one thing or another. I couldn't say that I was a Christian. I couldn't say because, you know, certainly other Christians would disagree very strongly that I was a Christian. <laughs> um, I couldn't call myself, you know, I mean, um, Muslim simply means um, uh, surrendered, right? I mean, many people translate it as, as, as translate it as submitted, but I, I think the word submission is a mistranslation. I think surrender is a much better translation for for for, for what that word means. In, in my opinion, right? I mean, what? Mm -hmm. how, how can I have any claim on this? Because I can't call myself a Muslim because you know, as I say, the 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 word Muslim means something very particular, and I can't call myself a Buddhist. Um, because, you know, I don't follow certain aspects of Buddhism as well. So what could I call myself? And I found um, uh, this, uh, I found, um, I, I'd been reading Aldous Huxley. I'd been reading his, um, uh, what was it, uh, A Brave New World. And I found that I really, really enjoyed that. And I started looking into a bit more of his work. And I found the perennial philosophy. And I've got this, um, mm. this, this uh, first first edition uh, over here just just behind Ooh. me on 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 my favorite shelf you know uh, there we go the perennial <laughs> philosophy and um uh, and i started reading this and i was like yes yes all of this stuff that's in this book this is the essential stuff that is um found in essential this is the universally applicable stuff and this is actually a problem right this word essential because um uh, well, I'll get the, I'll get into it anyway. I I I I thought okay, this is a this is a a label, and I really hate labels. But the, if people <laughs> do tend seem to like labels and seem to not like people who don't have a label. So all right, fine, I'll use this label, right? Perennialism mm -hmm, to mm -hmm. describe what I was: somebody who was interested in the universally applicable spiritual truths that are discoverable in um in 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 at least um the the major world traditions and that are that are common to the major world traditions mm -hmm. um then i started finding out about some of the pretty um nasty people who had also used the term perennialism to completely really um, 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 misrepresent the point right the point of of universality what they were suggesting was that uh, yes there is only one tradition and that is Christianity and all of the traditions that came before Christianity were really proto-Christianities. And all the religions that existed at the same time and after Christianity, they were just takes on Christianity, but really it's all Christianity. That's a very different message from mm -hmm. <laughs> there is a central message to all religions. And, you know, it's, 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 yeah. So, so, um, those those uh those those people who then started to call themselves perennialists um and and then also um uh, traditionalist was another another uh, misappropriated word to that originally was supposed to mean you know that there is a, a a um like a fundamental tradition that 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 you can thread through yeah. all of the world traditions but again you know they they also appropriated this word to say no there is one tradition and it is christianity you know it's yeah and um and uh, and they they used this um kind of perverted philosophy to then um to then uh, say yeah like um 
the, the, the Jewish people, they've got, for example, they've got Kabbalah, but, uh, you know, it's the wrong form because it's not the Christian form. So we'll just take a Kabbalah mm. because we're Christians and we're owed everything and we'll <laughs> use it to suppress the, 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 the Jewish people. And so, yeah, just really, really horrible stuff. So do I still call myself a perennialist? Well, I want to reclaim this word, which is really the only the only label that I'm I'm not even comfortable using it because you know because it means other things now you know it's uh, exactly so, so that's a tough one <laughs> that's a tough one <laughs> but hopefully what I've just talked about gives you an idea of what I mean by the word perennialist yeah. when I say that I'm I'm a perennialist yeah I'm interested in the deeper stuff yeah. <laughs>